July 20th, we're at Manchester Community College. We're talking with Gene Spaziani. Gene, thanks for coming in. When did you first uh, come to the college? I first came to the college uh, in the 60s when the college was just forming. Um, I was in the hotel business in Niantic. I was transferred up from a company from Richmond, Virginia, where I had worked for several years. They transferred me to Niantic. I got active with the Hotel Association, and I became the uh, education chairman. And we started setting up uh, courses, uh, co uh, coordinating with the uh, Educational Institute of the American Hotel and Motel Association out of Michigan State University in East Lansing. So we, we worked on a deal where we could teach courses in the technical schools. Uh, ho hotel people would teach other hotel people these courses. Uh, management, marketing, uh, cost control, etc. In the meantime, Manchester was being started, uh, I think, in a high school originally, and uh, eventually they, they hired uh, a building or rented a building on Hartford Road, uh, an old industrial building, and they, they wanted to start a hospitality program. So they contacted us, we supported it, um, they, we helped them set up the curriculum on it, and then they got the funding and they advertised for someone to go in to, to start the program. Uh, we had a guy named Jim McKinney, who was a uh, uh, hotel manager at West Haven Motor Inn, who was active with, with our educational group when he had graduated from the University of New Hampshire Hotel School. Uh, so he applied for the job and got the job. So Jim McKinney was the first coordinator of the hospitality program at MCC in the mid-60s. Uh, once he set the programs up, he couldn't teach all the courses, so he'd look for adjuncts, and I was a natural uh, choice, I guess, because I had taught the courses and and, and knew the curriculum. So uh, for many years, uh, I was an adjunct while I was still in the hotel business, teaching courses up at the Hartford Road campus. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the company I was working for sold sold out, and um, I took the job as a Connecticut's first tourism director and did that for a year. And after the end of a year, I bought a resort, and I ran that for five years. In the meantime, I was still doing some uh, uh, courses for Jim. Uh, <clears throat> in 1974, I had sold all my facilities, and I was the uh, uh, marketing director of the Norris Sheridan Hotel. And late in the summer, Fred Ramey came down, who was the, who was the director of the, hosp of the uh, Business Careers Division, where the hospitality program was, was located. In. And he asked me uh, if I would be interested in teaching for a year. He said, I know you like to teach. You've been involved with the educational thing. You've taught courses here. Uh, Jim McKinney wants to take a year off, a professional year off. Um, and he says, I want to let you know, he said, I really think it's a position that it would be a lifelong position for you because I don't think McKinney's coming back and I think you're the type of person who could fit into our program very well. So I said, fine. I was very enthusiastic about it. <coughs> Taught for the year. Uh, and in the course of the year, I also started doing uh, uh, wine courses, which had never been, never been done through community services. That was fun. Uh, and, and then at the end of the year, McKinney came back. So... In the meantime, Frank Latuka, who was, a, who was our food service guy, very good food service man, he said he was going to go to the University of Massachusetts. He wanted to go up there and earn his doctorate, and he knew the people up there, and his wife was from that area. So he said, I'm taking a year off. He said, but I'm not coming back. So Ramey came to me, and he said, well, he said, why don't you take Latuka's place this year? So, so I went to the hotel program, to the food service program, did all the food service courses the second year. And then at the end of the second year, uh, the two did not come back, and then they had to advertise the program. So then I had to go through that process again, hire it again. In the meantime, we had a new president, Dr. Dennison, come in, who I liked, and I got along very well with him, and, uh, his and he, he liked me, and so he supported me, and uh, uh, I, I was hired. I was then hired and started my career at MCC down the lower campus. And we loved the lower campus because everyone had, had their own office, everyone had a window, all the activities, we were in a short area where we could see what was going on, and it, it was just a wonderful place to, to work, and everyone knew everyone, uh, and that, that was great. In the meantime, I started coaching the baseball team and, and getting involved in other things and doing wine courses, and um, we started uh, uh, going on our southern trips. We started raising money for our southern trips during the spring break, and we started, uh, we did uh, fun, we'd wine tastings over at the Manchester Country Club to raise money, and that's actually the start of the great... Uh, uh, auction you have now, which has become an annual event. So we kind of started that tradition going. Uh, in the meantime, there was talk about a new building being built, a low building, and so they formed a committee, and they asked us on our faculty to design 
or put together the, the recommendations for the, what we want in a new building. So we, the, the faculty designed the, the kitchens that are here today, the north and south kitchen. We designed, we designed it all, and um, we're in, involved in, in, in developing the, the new building and the new, our new facility. Uh, once we moved up, once the building was finished, we moved up here, and um, <clears throat> we were a little bit disappointed because we, we now went into uh, offices with no windows, and then we had to double up with other people, and it was it was a, it was a radical a radical change for us. But uh, we but we overcame that. We enjoyed the facility. It was it was certainly more accommodating and better, and so forth. So we continued on, and in the meantime, I had gotten involved in setting up curriculums at other community colleges. Uh, uh, Andy McCurdy's wife had recommended me because she knew I was involved with the uh, hospitality curriculum to these other colleges. And uh, Norwalk Community College wanted a program, so I designed their program. And then uh, Three Rivers, and then uh, Esnuntic, and then Gateway. So uh, I was familiar with all that stuff. In the meantime, uh, Tatro, who, who was uh, Jim Tatro, who had been the uh, dean here of community services, who I'd worked with and liked, he was very progressive. I uh, had gone down to Gateway and uh, became dean down there, and was really in the campaign to improve things down there. And the school was not uh, was kind of floundering around management-wise. And he asked me to come down and uh, run the program for him that I had designed, which included hotel management, food service management, culinary arts, and diet tech program. Uh, the diet tech program had already been enforced there; but we just fit into our umbrella. <clears throat> and then. My mother, who was, an, who was elderly, living in Orange, had, had physical problems and uh, other problems and needed, required maintenance, but she didn't want to move from the family homestead, so uh, Jim's request, uh, so I changed and changed schools and went down there and took care of my mother and, and got the program started down there and continued down there to uh, do a lot of things we did here, teaching wine courses and coaching in baseball teams and things like that. And I continued on. Uh, until nine, 1999 when um, uh, I retired. And um, after I retired, um, I, I, I taught uh, as an adjunct at uh, Southern, at the uh, University of New Haven, Mitchell College, Quinnipiac. I taught a course at each one of the, the community colleges I set the curriculum up at. So I had a good understanding of how all these colleges functioned. And uh, uh, it, it always came out that Manchester always always seemed to be the, the best to work with and uh, maybe because I was used to it and I started out with it but management wise and organizational structure was was always uh, much better than some of these other colleges I had I had worked with uh, in, in the meantime um, I still teach uh, wine courses uh, become involved in national organizations uh, uh, became president of the American Wine Society which is a um, 6,000 member became the first New Englander to become president of the organization. I continue on by doing their programs each year for their annual conferences. I be, uh, became a charter member of the Society of Wine Educators, which we formulated out in UCAL Davis. As a matter of fact, that started from here. Uh, back in 1997, uh, the Wine Institute out of San Francisco had sent out letters to college and universities throughout the country to uh, try to get people interested who were wine educators to get together and form a group. And I went to uh, Dean Fenn at the time, uh, who was the dean here. And he sent it over to me, and he said, if you're interested, he says, uh, maybe you ought to look, this, look into this. So I did, and I went out there and uh, became a charter member of the Society of Wine Educators, which is, has continued to be a, a very uh, functional and uh, well-organized organization and has uh, an international status. With the, Now we have uh, educators all over the world and very well coordinated. So it, that part was fun, and it was all incorporated into my activities here. Had many students through the years who have um, participated in some of the activities. Uh, we've gotten them uh, involved in the industry. Uh, during my tenure here, uh, we recommended a lot of our students to go to the University of Nevada at Las Vegas at the time because uh, that college uh, was one of the least expensive college universities in the United States. Uh, and it was uh, new and it was very effective and efficient. And I think we sent about 20 or 25 students out there. Some still live out there. Uh, that, that was a good move. Um, so we, we were in the pioneering aspect of, of the growth of the college. And uh, uh, even today, uh, I still teach wine courses here. Come back uh, two or three, one night stands a semester. Uh, we have a lot of friends in the area. 
and uh, it, it continues my association with the college I feel very close to and very happy to have been associated with, if I'm lucky to. Now, you talked about uh, working in the uh, East Campus. Um, tell us about the fire that took place and how it impacted your program. I'm sorry? The fire in the uh, Oh, the East fire, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'm not sure the exact year, 79, 80, somewhere around there. Um, apparently there, there was uh, some wiring problems and, and that main building was housed everything. It housed our facility, the, the cooking facility, the student lounge, uh, headquarters, offices, meeting, <laughs> library, uh, it's about everything. <clears throat> and they had a fire one night and um, uh, we didn't really um, know about it until the following day. I was coaching the baseball team, we were away that day and then we came back the next day we had a home game here at our field, which incidentally our baseball team built in 1978. Our baseball team literally built the baseball field. The engineers had laid it out, they brought in the sod, and our baseball team in two days, getting paid minimum wage, built the baseball field. They turned, that's another part of the story. But anyhow, um, the, the day of the game, we saw a helicopter come in. Uh, Ella Grasso was the governor at the time. She came in, walked over the side, and and guaranteed, she says, uh, we're going to replace it. She says, within a year, she says, we'll have, we'll have this place back in order. And she did. Within a year, um, uh, we were back. But in the meantime, we were at a disadvantage because all of our equipment was gone. We had nothing to work with. Uh, so it was worked out that uh, one of the churches down on Harford Road campus had a cellar kitchen, which was very sparse uh, and, mid and minimally equipped. Uh, but we had to run, our, we had to run our, our food classes down there because we didn't have any other options. So we went down there. But maybe it was a good experience, too, because many restaurants are not fully equipped anyway. So it taught students how to work under adverse conditions. Uh, but we continued on, and we, we put on, presented luncheons and dinners, and people came in, and, and we survived that year. And that was a real test, I think, uh, for, for, the, for the food service and culinary arts program because if we didn't have that, I don't know what we would have done. I mean, we, we needed the facility, the hands-on facility. So I think that kind of got us over a hump, and then after that, things seemed to fall into place, and then they start talking about building the new building and so forth. Another interesting fact is I started out with Dr. Lowe, who was the president here. Went to, went, then we went to uh, our second uh, president, uh, Dennison, and then ended up with Dr. Vinson. One of the years uh, after Dr. Lowe had retired, one of the years we were down in Sarasota, Florida, with the baseball team there in spring break, uh, Dr. Lowe had come over and spent an afternoon with us sitting on the bench with the baseball team. So that was kind of fun. We hadn't seen him in a couple of years. Uh, I think he's deceased now. I think he died now. But so we've had a lot of mixed experiences, wonderful memories, developed a lot of traditions uh, because we were, we were there first. And we had a lot of enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm within our faculty. Uh, we always had good faculty. We had good administration. We had support, always had good support, which was important. And now we have a magnificent facility, which we're all proud of. And uh, I always feel proud that maybe uh, I helped along the line to make it what it is today. Now, you, you mentioned the fact that um, you coached the baseball team, mm -hmm. uh, the team built the field in mm -hmm. the late 70s. Um, as far as I can tell, MCC may be the only state community college and for the baseball that's team. A, that's the saddest part of what's happened in the system. I always felt, <clears throat> the reason I love the community college system, I always felt that kids who go to community college sh shouldn't be cheated out of other students get to the other state colleges and universities. And when we first started coaching, uh, every, we had eight, there was eight community colleges with baseball teams. And we used to run a state tournament for the eight teams. Um, and then little by little they started going out. And now, as it stands now, Manchester is the only one. And um, Avery Point at UConn is the only other junior college playing only two schools. Now, Massachusetts still has all their teams. Rhode Island has their team. Uh, and, but Connecticut has really uh, cheated a lot of our people, which is unfortunate. And this year was a tremendous year for our, our, our program here, baseball program. For the third year in a row, uh, Manchester had gone to the College World Series in Texas. And, um, and th this year they ended up in fourth place, which is great. Avery Point, uh, 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 Manchester's in Division Three. Avery Point's in Division Two Junior College. They went down to uh, Oklahoma and they got beat in the finals of the World Series, Division Three, uh, Division Two community co uh, junior colleges. Uh, UConn, with Jim Penners as the coach, uh, took his team into the into the NCAA national, rated 18th in the country this year. Uh, Central Connecticut was another one who got into the got into the into the uh, 
into the, into the tournament this year. So Connecticut has really uh, developed a, a lot of uh, wonderful coaches and, and, and teams. But it was sad to lose all the teams at Connecticut uh, Community College. It was, it was attitude. Uh, you know, the enthusiasm was there. The need was there. But for some reason, I, I guess um, it was easier not to do it by some schools. And it's really a sad thing because they're cheating students out of a lot of opportunities, which they should, they should have the opportunity to but there's no basketball, you know. Uh, and that's, thank God for MCC hanging in there and, and doing the right thing. Then maybe they'll come back eventually, I hope so, you know. Now you've been associated with the college uh, in a variety of capacities for roughly 40 years, maybe more than 40 yeah. years. Yeah, that's right. Um, what are some of the highlights or, well, let's just this. How about some funny stories or anecdotes? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of funny stories through the years. Uh, we first started, uh, we started doing gourmet dinners at the end, like a graduation uh, thing at the end of the year with, with our food service students, uh, putting on a gourmet dinner um, based upon uh, the traditional Escoffier uh, gourmet uh, from, from, history, from history gone past. And um, the students would design the, design the courses and, and, and the different menus, and we'd put them together. We'd, I'd add the wines into it, and we'd put on, we'd put on gourmet dinner at the end of the year, Manchester Manchester Country Club. We did some at the uh, hotels in the area, and it became a, 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 one, a wonderful, wonderful event. One of the years, we're at the Manchester Country Club. We're right in the middle of the dinner, and they, the fire started in the, in the kitchen, <laughs> and the fire engines are coming down. <laughs> They're coming down at the, at the. Nobody in the dining room knew what was going on there. <laughs> so we we had a fire, and it was it wasn't a bad fire, but it was smoke, and uh, and no one. It, no one knew at the end of the night when it happened. They heard the fire engineering and so forth going in there. And they, put, they put it out right away. But that was kind of a, another experience for our students to go through, that, you know, for the future. But that was fun, um, interesting. And through the years, we've, we've, had, we've had so many, uh, uh, so many things happen that, uh, with, with some of our food service students that were amazing. Uh, we used to send, uh, originally we used to send a student to Ireland. There's a school in Ireland we work with as a reciprocal college to send students to. We sent one there, they sent one. And that one, one year they sent us uh, this Irish kid who was just absolutely spectacular. He had been in the business since he was six years old. So when he got here, he knew more about the business than we, the faculty did, about gourmet dining and everything. Uh, Patrick, uh, I can't think of his last name, Patrick Mulcahy, I think. And uh, he was just absolutely spectacular. And he, he would mesmerize the other students by some of his experiences, and we all learned from him. So uh, it was just—it's just been a, a, a marvelous uh, era of, uh, of fun and uh, study and and the feel a sense of accomplishment. I think uh, we've had with uh, developing the program and seeing it's the success of it, and seeing the students go on. And I'm still in communication with a lot of the students. Uh, many of the students are. Um, are on my list, and we go back and forth constantly. This, I had a catcher, Doug Surant, who was a uh, he, he might you might call him a challenging player to the coaches. He was a, uh, always got into trouble, but he was a hell of a player and a little catcher. And uh, at the end of the game, it looked like he rolled down a mud mud bank because he would just be all full of mud and, and so forth. We're playing down in Florida one year. We're playing Indiana University. At, this was in Sanford, Florida. And uh, the first time Doug gets up, we're trying to get a rally going, and he leans into the ball. He gets hit in the shoulder. You know, he, he goes running down first base. <clears throat> so the other coach, hey, he, he, they, were, they were on his case and let it go. Second time up, he moves his leg and he gets bounced off his desk because on the first base. We get to the last inning. The game is tied 7-7. Uh, Danny Corazelli is pitching for us. He was a kid for me from, from Fitch. I coached him in Legion Ball. And we had, we had to finish the inning because we had to go over and play Iowa State University in the second half of a double header. Here at Little Community College playing these, the Cyclones from Iowa Anyhow, Doug gets up, 7-7, seven to seven, two out. Doug's the last batter. After, he's, after he bats, if he goes out, we're, we move over. The game's tied. So Doug gets up, and he hits a ball, hits a home run. I don't know. He's running down first base, and he's yelling at the team, giving, giving these guys a, a, a sign, saying, I told you, jerks, I could hit. You know, <laughs> we win the game 8-7. to seven. I get down the gateway. Uh, I'm down there a couple of years. I get a call from, from Texas, a Doug Sarant. He's in the security business. He's, uh, he owns a security company down in Texas. 
He said, Coach, he says, uh, he said, you still raising money? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, we were raising money. We were selling tickets. But he said, well, okay, I'll send you, send me a check for $500. Doug Saran. So, and uh, the last three years that Gateway, uh, that um, Manchester has been down at the World Series in Texas, he's been there all three years cheering uh, the team on. So he's been a, He's been a great. He's been a great support. But he certainly was a challenging uh, player. But he was a great player. But uh, deportment-wise, there was a lot to be demanded, <laughs> which we never got. But we had a lot of characters like that, uh, particularly in sports. You get a lot of them like that. Uh, but Doug was—he was a special guy. Peter Palmer was another one. The kid from Ashford. He wanted to go to um, Eastern. Very poor kid. Had the family was very very poor. Um, but he was a wiry left-handed, and geez, he could—he had a curveball that was terrific, you know. And I really wanted this kid because we needed him. So I talked to him, uh, you know, I was honest to him and told him exactly what we could do for him or try to do for him and everything. So he came over and he just did a wonderful job, and we became very, very close. He was almost like a son to me, and um, we sent him down to Appalachian State in uh, in, Tex in uh, North Carolina. Um, he was getting into the the, the uh, uh, Police program, law enforcement program. Uh, one of my coaches, Al Freehide, who's, who's still teaching here, uh, was one of my assistant coaches. He was the head of the program. Uh, so Peter went down there, and um, I used to, from time to time, he needed help, and I used to send him some things that he needed. Uh, and we became, we still became very close, stayed, stayed very close. And he uh, finally graduated. While he was down there, he became uh, was all uh, the all Southern Conference left-hand pitcher in the Southern Conference. And that was uh, 89 or 89 or 90, and uh, he, he now he now he works um, for the state um, judicial department as a um, uh, it, in, in the law enforcement end of it, and we we're still very close and we, we communicate back and forth. So we establish these kind of relationships, which are lifelong and will always be that way, which is really what the payoff is. You know. If you were, <coughs> excuse me, if you were talking to someone who just got hired. Mm -hmm to start their career working at Memphis Community College. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to that person? Well, uh, I, think, I think it starts with the individual themselves, what, 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 their, what they feel about education uh, and what, what their responsibilities are. Uh, you know, it, all colleges have rules and regulations. Manchester has certain things you have to uh, abide by, which is fine. Uh, but I think, it, I think it's in your own personality, how much you want to participate, how much you want to do. I also was a faculty advisor for the, the newspaper. When I was in college, I was the editor of the college newspaper besides playing baseball. So if you have these kind of interests, participate in that. You can help these people. Um, and uh, it's amazing how you can see their personalities change when they fall into, into, into your game. You know, uh, kids coming, at the, coming out of high school uh, sometimes have certain attitudes, and it gets harder and harder every year because it's getting more difficult in the system today. But... Uh, getting them uh, in, on your track and thinking like you are. But I say participate in as many activities as you possibly can. Uh, we, had, we had a hospitality management club. We formed the Hotel Sales Managers Club, which is uh, a national organization. We were the student chapter of the Hotel Sales Managers. We'd go and participate in the, in the monthly dinners with the professionals, which got a lot of the kids' jobs. We used to do blitzes, which is part of the marketing aspect of hotels. You go out and you go into the community and you work with one particular hotel or facility and pass out their literature and try to create some business for them. Uh, I think that's the kind of thing a person should have. Just don't teach for the paycheck. The paycheck is insignificant. It's, it's what you're going to get out of it uh, and what the students are going to get out of it. I think you have to have some kind of a dedication to, 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 the, to your profession. I think that's very, very important. Well, those are most of the questions that I uh, wanted to ask. Is there anything else you want to <clears throat> add or bring up? Well, no, I, I think I've, I've said most of it. Uh, I feel very fortunate and honored and lucky to be a part of this uh, history of this great school. Uh, it is a great school. Uh, having had a lot of opportunities to see other schools, uh, you can make an objective uh, judgment as to uh, the quality of this, this, this college and of course, now they have a lot of great facilities too, which which helps a lot. And, uh, but the facilities alone don't make it. It's got to it's got to be in the individuals. Um, facilities help make things a lot easier and you know help sell the the cars to get in. But once you get in, you've got to do the job, you know. And uh, I felt that we, I think we did a pretty good job getting it off the ground and developing our programs and um, 
and our dedication has been good. And I see some of my colleagues just retired who've been with me this past year for many years, and uh, I wish them well. But we've, we've had a pretty good run, and I'm very proud of that.